Lane lay back on the grass and watched the clouds. One looked like a duck, another looked like a couch, another her mom. She had to go her own way because she wasn't a little girl anymore. She had her course charted, even if she wasn't exactly sure where it went. Io voglio chiedere mio destino. It meant her destiny was her own. The cow named Don Coulain from the ancient Irish battle, the cattle raid of Cooley, represented all her dreams coming true. At the moment, he was lying next to her, like her cat Pete used to do. I will get you, my pretty, you and your little cow, too, the woman said from the sky. She was a cloud that picked up the brown bull and took him into the sky, like the tornado in the Wizard of Oz. What crazy thing is this? Lane asked. The cloud with the face of Mom had gathered him up, like a thick quilt around a bony knee. Lane cursed her luck. Just as soon as she found the brown bull, she had lost him again. It was like a gift had been placed in her hands and ripped away. But it was no one's fault except hers, because who had the power to take her dream away but she? That was Barogue the Enchantress, Morgan said. She came out of the cottage and was standing next to Lane now. Morgan was a young woman again, and wearing something flimsy. Lane didn't think it was very attractive because it left nothing to the imagination. What happened to the cow, Lane asked, watching the great storm brewing above her, and the empty spot where Dawn once stood, but was no longer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. We the one. We the one. Yeah. We the one. We the one. Yeah. Lane felt bad for Dawn, who she led all the way from her previous mission and left hanging like a half attempted dream. But Morgan was acting so nonchalant about him, it made her angry. Baroque the Enchantress drops him off in different locations in Ireland to make the battle more interesting, Morgan said. It's hard to tell where he'll end up next. Queen Maeve and her army have a harder time capturing him this way. Although Elaine made this part of the story up, there was a similar tale about an enchantress who stole the hero Selhorn's favorite cow and deposited him on Balor of the Evil Eye's fortress. Selhorn sailed across the sea and found Balor of the Evil Eye's palace. Ethlyn, Balor's daughter, lived in the palace tower that overlooked the Atlantic Ocean. It was on an island and reminded Lane of a lighthouse. Ethlyn was Balor of the Evil Eye's daughter. She lived in the palace tower that overlooked the Atlantic Ocean. It was on a small island. It reminded Lane of a lighthouse. When Selhorn came to try and get his cow back, he found Ethlyn locked in the tower by her parents. From their meeting and falling in love, Luke was born. Luke was Cacolan's father. Well, sort of. That was another story. But it meant that cows could be carried through the air by magical enchantresses. So maybe Lane leaving home to chase her dream was similar to Ethlyn in a way. Maybe it wasn't about anyone keeping her trapped in a tower. Maybe she just had the desire, like many young people, to fly unbound without a safety net. And perhaps Barogue the Enchantress was not Mom, but Lane's own inner critic that was keeping her stuck. That voice of criticism that told her she could not do the things she wanted to do.
She could learn to quiet it, be easier on herself, since she felt she was on the right path now. She was not her past or her future. She was just right then, in the moment. Self-doubt didn't have the ability to take Lane's dreams away, not unless she gave in to it. Only, how was she able to get Dawn back a second time, now that the whole of Ireland was at war over him? Now that others saw something in her they had never seen before, as she was presenting her gifts to the world. Where did Barogue take him? Lane asked. Don't worry, Morgan said. He'll show up again, probably when you least expect it. Even though Morgan had shapeshifted while in the cottage, and Lane had not seen it happen, she knew she was the same woman, whether young or old. She knew Morgan in both her versions, the way she knew her own hands. She shapeshifted. Lane had looked away for only a second, and now her dream was gone and Morgan's heart was about to be dropped from a very steep cliff. But she could only bear witness to it. There was nothing she could do to stop it. Morgan was lame, expectant and hopeful in the past. She seemed almost electric. She had longer hair, and it seemed somehow brighter. Her skin was glowing, and Lane was pretty sure her eyes had stars in them. Only how could she be jealous of her past self, who was so much less evolved than the version she was now? There was a movie star quality about her, with so much hope and expectancy in her eyes. It breached on vanity, and Lane felt herself getting sucked back in to something that wasn't quite her. She was a lovely maiden with her shawl over her shoulders, off after some guy. But Lane thought she was more authentic as the old woman, preoccupied and content, crafting something with her hands. She had soft features and slightly foreign-looking eyes. One of the kids at the children's home said they were a nice shape. Your eyes, flowers of soil and snow. It was never meant to be. All of the teaching jobs she had, each had given her back what she'd given. And this was her good gesa, an Irish word. Gesa was a code that the warriors followed. And Lynn considered it like karma. Morgan didn't seem to care or even realize Dawn was gone. That's how distracted she was. I feel I've made a terrible mistake, Lane said, letting myself get distracted by a boy. Don't worry, you'll find him again, Morgan repeated. You'll get him back. Lane wanted to shake the silliness from her that seemed to say, when you get around to it, like she didn't understand how fleeting time was and how letting a dream slip between one's fingers was worse than death. 